Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and this is hopefully just going to be a quick follow-up to the previous video about the OX129 microcode, because it occurred to me that I didn't bother to show what happens if you turn the Intel default settings off. So, here we are in the BIOS on the Gigabyte uh, Z790 ORS Master X, I have the 14900K in there, and the BIOS version uh, is F7F, and you can see that the microcode is 129. Um, right, like right there, microcode 129, version F7F. Um, but anyway, um, so we're just gonna, and with the Intel default settings turned on, uh, this, um, like, limits the core voltage to a maximum of 1.55 volts, and it does that, so it works. Now, is 1.55 volts low enough to be safe for long-term use? I like, I can't know, um, right? Like, Intel seems to think so, and they did announce that they're extending the warranties for 13th gen and 14th gen uh, CPUs, so it would be pretty stupid of them if they uh, didn't set the voltage limit low enough and then extended the warranties, because that means they're going to be, repl you know, like, because, you know, if they just slow the degradation down, um, they might still end up having to replace a bunch of CPUs in, like, two years anyway, so that would have not really achieved anything. Um, but yeah, so I don't know for sure. Um, now if you don't trust Intel, uh, if you have a Gigabyte or an Asus motherboard, what you can do is you can just go into Advanced Voltage Settings, um, Internal VR Control, and turn this on, and then down here you can set a custom voltage limit, um, if you set this to 1400, at least on anything that isn't a KS, this won't really drastically reduce your performance and it'll stop the CPU from ever going above 1.4 volts. Um, so, yeah, but that's if you don't trust Intel. If you do trust Intel, um, which admittedly at this point is quite kind of a, you know, a question, potentially questionable thing to do, um, you can just, you know, you just leave the Intel default settings turned on and everything is fine. Um, at least if your CPU already hasn't degraded to the point that it is unstable. Uh, even with the Intel default settings. Um, so if you, like, install this latest BIOS and your CPU is still crashing, you should just RMA the CPU. Um, because, yeah, if, if your CPU doesn't work on Intel default settings, even on the, like, extreme profile of Intel default settings, your CPU is degraded to the point that it's defective. Um, now, uh, if you turn the Intel default settings off... Uh, you get this lovely warning about how you're potentially going to damage your CPU, uh, which is probably for the best. But uh, yeah, you just get put on the good old Gigabyte uh, CPU optimizations, which do such things as... Uh, actually, we can't see it right now. Well, we'll just see it in, in Windows, so we'll just restart. Um, with any luck, we'll see a voltage spike of more than 1.55 volts before we even get into Windows. Or, like, get to the desktop, I should say. Like, it, it usually, like, it can happen while Windows is just booting up. Because um, the issue is with the Intel, uh, with the Gigabyte optimizations, uh, one of the things Gigabyte does is that they set the AC load line to 0 0.4 milliohms. The default load line on the voltage regulator of this motherboard is 1.1 milliohms, which basically means that in all core loads or high current loads, the CPU will not get enough voltage and crash. Uh, and this is... In, like, and this will happen even on brand new CPUs that aren't degraded, right? So the fact, like, it, your CPU not being stable with your motherboard's, uh, like, gigabyte default settings or Asus default settings, that is not an indication that your CPU has degraded. That's just an indication that motherboard manufacturers don't know how to read a spec sheet. Um, Though, the funny thing is that the way they can't, like, the this is technically an undervolt, what Gigabyte is doing. Um, which is why it crashes in high load, and for single, like, the the funny thing is it's as a, as far as, like, single core load, this undervolt isn't actually very effective at reducing uh, low core count, like, voltages. Um, so, yeah, it, it's still, like, you, can, you still get very high voltage spikes with, like, the Gigabyte default settings. They're just less high than if they were following the actual, like, Intel spec with some of the other uh, Gigabyte optimizations. Like, th this, this platform has too many 
like the way Intel decided to implement these CPUs in terms of like power delivery and clock management is just dumb as far as I'm concerned because it's unnecessarily complicated. Like TVB is not an extension of the boost table. It's a uh, leash to like rein in the stupidity that is the top of Intel's boost table, which is just like, why would you do that? Why, why, it's just like... <laughs> But anyway, um, so the side effects of, of this is like, so now that we're on the gigabyte settings, if I try to run Cinebench 15, um, I can't, because it crashes. Um, also, you'll notice that already on the oscilloscope, we're at 1.5, uh, yeah, 1.56 volts, um, which if you have the Intel default settings turned on, that will simply not happen. The voltage will not go above 1.54 volts in my experience, at least with this board. Some other boards might behave somewhat differently. Um, so yeah, so Cinebench won't run, but funnily enough, you might think like, oh, well, will Ycruncher run? Well, Ycruncher, funnily enough, will run, though that might be just because it's very memory bottlenecked right now. If we intentionally stop the workload while it's running, I'm trying to like intentionally cause it to... Uh, Spike. Oh, there we go, 1.57. Um, you'll also notice that, like, White Cruncher, which is a pretty heavy all-core load, um, yeah, this runs, while Cinebench doesn't. Um, so, that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, now, the reason for this instability... And unfortunately, I don't have a way to check the voltage regulator. Oh, wait, this is only sensors. Oops. I want the full system summary. Or not summary, I want, like, the full system readout. So the reason why now it, like, why now the CPU is unstable with the gigabyte settings is because with the gigabyte settings, if we scroll down to... Uh, where is it? AC load line. You'll see that the AC load line is now set to 0 0.4 milliohms. Um, and the motherboard's VRM is actually set to 1.1 milliohms. So when we try to run Cinebench, the voltage gets too low and Cinebench crashes. Um, but certain other workloads are potentially just fine. I wonder if I have a... <clears throat> I mean, I guess we could try Prime 95. Um... It's not something I've tried before, but with the, like, gigabyte defaults. So I'm not entirely sure what we're going to see. But yeah, we'll just try small FFTs. And, um... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be crashing. Right? So that that's like... Because when you run Prime95, the CPU... Uh, right, so, like, I can't run Cinebench, but I can run Prime95, because when we run Prime95, the CPU actually hits the 280-watt power limit, um, and the voltages are very low, and the clocks are very low, like, we're at just 5 gigahertz, right? So, th this is the thing, is, like, the this platform, like, there are multiple different problems. One of them is that, like, well, you have the degradation, which is caused by the excessive voltage spike in, like, load transition and low load scenarios which is intel's fault because they just wrote a like vo like the way they generate vid voltages is just completely insane um so that's what the ox129 microcode is fixing but it only fixes that if you actually use the intel default settings if you don't use the intel default settings that like that fix is gone um so, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, I would highly recommend that you do not turn off the Intel default settings, because it will take off the voltage limiter, and then you're at the mercy of whatever your motherboard vendor did. Uh, which is often worse, because you'll have, like, instability in certain all-core workloads, because the load lines aren't configured, are configured to be too high V-droop relative to what, like, you basically get a massive untested undervolt right out of the box. If you lost the silicon lottery, your CPU will crash in some workloads, not all workloads, because just, yeah. Um, so it's really not, like, this, that, this is the thing that's been annoying me with this whole situation, is, like, we have, like, there was the thermal velocity boost issues, 
you have the voltage spike issues, you have the excessive AC, like, load line undervolting from the motherboard vendors, like, there's, like, three different problems that they've been, like, that have been getting, like, progressively fixed, um, and it's just, like, like, the, I don't think nobody, like, they, they just don't test anything at Intel. It's just, you know, they make CPUs and they sell them, but they don't test them, um, because testing costs time and money, which apparently money is something that Intel no longer has, um, as we've recently find out, found out. So, yeah, so that's, that's just, that's it. That's all I wanted to show is just, yeah, if you, you if you update to the latest BIOS that has the OX129 microcode, you do have to use the Intel default settings in order to get that voltage limit, um, to work. Because if you turn off the Intel default settings, that voltage limit goes away. Now, maybe some vendors somehow, like, have a way of keeping it in place. But at least on Gigabyte, it just disappears the moment you turn off Intel default settings. And your core voltage is happily going to go back up to, you know, 1.58 volts in this case. But with some CPUs, and I guess if your CPU doesn't, like... The funny thing is, like, for me, the easiest way to trigger the excessive voltages is Cinebench 15. But my CPU can't run Cinebench 15 with the Gigabyte default settings. However, if you win the Silicon Lottery, um, you do get some CPUs that can run Cinebench 15 with the, it, with the Gigabyte default settings. And if you use... And in those cases, maybe you'll see even higher voltage spikes than what I'm seeing, right? So, like... Th this is just, yeah, like this, this whole thing is just a mess because this entire platform is a mess. Um, and, uh, like here we are. And you know what, what's been kind of bugging me is like, I wonder how many Intel users just kind of lived with the fact that their system randomly crashes. So I, like, I do wonder if we're like not seeing the full picture of how widespread this is because some people just think like, oh, the game is bad when it crashes or it's the NVIDIA drivers when the game crashes or it's, you know, uh, like it's just buggy software when the, the thing crashes. Um, when it's like, nope, that's probably your CPU crashing. Um, cause the thing is like the CPU ultimately like sort of handles everything that happens on the system. So if the CPU is unstable, everything is unstable. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, anyway, if you have a Gigabyte motherboard, update to the latest BIOS. Don't turn off the Intel default settings unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, and if you don't trust Intel, you can go into the advanced voltage settings. Now, I'm not 100% certain that this necessarily works on every motherboard, the Intel VR uh, voltage limit. Um, I've heard from some people that it, like, doesn't necessarily work on every board, but at least on the boards using the Renesas VRM controller, uh, yeah, you can just set an arbitrary voltage limit. So if you're paranoid, or you just don't trust Intel at this point, which probably is a, you know, correct stance to have with Intel at this point, you can set the voltage limit to 1.4, or even less than that, but personally I would probably just go to 1.4, um... Because, uh, yeah, like, like I can't know if 1.4 is safe, but I kind of suspect that 1.4 is probably more than enough to be safe. Because, um, like, a lot of the CPUs out there in the wild have to have been running way over 1.4 very regularly, and the degradation isn't that fast, right? Like, it, it's taken quite a lot of time for some people to, to degrade their CPUs, so... Um, yeah, anyway, um, that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you found this somewhat interesting and or useful. I will be also doing another video going into like what exactly is AC and DC load line and uh, like the VRM load lines on these, uh, on, on well, this motherboard. I might also do that for some other, well, I don't know if I want to do that for other boards. I don't really find this topic particularly interesting because this is just like, look, if you wrote better documentation, we wouldn't be here. Like, this isn't that hard. <laughs> Write a damn spec sheet. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, I do want to do another video just, like, going over what AC-DC load line does and how, like, it interacts with the actual motherboard's uh, voltage regulator um, and, like, how can you adjust the actual volt V-droop of the motherboard itself. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, I have a Patreon. There's like a Bandcamp link. There's also the Teespring store where there's like shirts and hoodies and posters. So yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you'd check those out. And that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.